Karen, good morning. Good to have you with us. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, just to start out, um, the I think the website's in beta, but uh, the reviews yesterday mm -hmm. appeared to be pretty solid. Uh, any hiccups as far as you can see? No, I think um, it is in beta, and um, I think this is an important move on the part of the administration. Clearly, they're enlarging their strategy, which gives them a strong stake in acquiring tests, making sure the pricing for tests are affordable and the supply is there. So I think it's welcome news for all Americans and certainly for anyone in the healthcare ecosystem. This does enlarge the strategy because the strategy can't just be about vaccines, it has to be about tests, it has to be about masks and bringing it all together in an operational way. Right. Has there been, has it been difficult to keep up with uh, coverage requirements? Well, the administration gave health plans four days to create an entirely new infrastructure to meet their regulatory requirements. On the one hand, uh, I appreciate the confidence they had in us. On the other, I don't know any entity that can seamlessly move in such a short period of time. We did it, and I'm sure a number of health plans across the country did as well. But the key was to make sure that you're putting up a website, A, that works, B, that's very straightforward, understandable for consumers, and you're doing your part to make sure you're giving people peace of mind. That's a tall order in four days. I'm proud of our team. They work night and day to put up a website that works and allows people to use it. That includes simple things like creating an entirely new form to make this work, which is not um, an inconsequential endeavor. Karen, it's Morgan. I mean, four days. It's hey, bre Morgan. breathtaking, yeah, breathtakingly know. short uh, amount of, of time. How much demand do you actually expect from your users, from your customers, in terms of ordering these tests? Uh, you know, it, it, the jury's out, if you will, in the sense that um, it's important for people to get tested, to have peace of mind, to be able to go about their day to day. But it's very early, of course. And uh, we know that people are responding to the administration. We know they're responding to the new websites that we've put up, other health plans have put up as well. But it'll take a few days for us to really calibrate how, what channels people are using. The other side of this, Morgan, is how do we sort of step back and enlarge this strategy nationally? So we think about supply. We think about testing. We think about making masks, free tests, vaccines, the whole pantheon of resources together available to the American people. And I think the administration seems to be on the precipice of enlarging the strategy, but they need to talk comprehensively, think comprehensively, and act comprehensively, too. Yeah, it's, it's difficult. I mean, it's, um, we've yeah. heard about Omicron, uh, what, eight weeks ago, right. and, and people expect half a billion uh, tests in the mail right away. Yeah. I guess my question would be, uh, have we, how do we apply these lessons into the next variant wave? Or do you think maybe the advent and the availability of antivirals will make that a different picture? This is a great question. I don't think we can lurk, lurch from variant to variant. I think what we need to do is step back and ask the question, and get the answer to the question, how does the country live with COVID broadly? And we know that it's going to be with us for a while. We know we'll see new variants. We know until the entire world is vaccinated, and maybe even not then, we're going to continue to struggle with this disease. So how do we address it? How do we understand what to do and what to mobilize, recognizing it's going to be with us for a while? And what is the role of government? And I think the government's role is much bigger than it has been.